If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. So in a previous video, we talked about the meta characters in regular expressions. Here we begin the hands-on built to the meta characters. Let's first begin by importing the library, which is RE or regular expressions. And then we have some sample text that we want to experiment with. So the text goes like this. It's called text one and it has agent ID 007. Let's separate numbers and alphabets in this string. So let's make it an object which holds this string. And then we are going to use the compile method of the RE library. So what does compile do? Compile essentially is going to help us convert a specific pattern into a regular expression object. When we are looking for numbers only, we may pass it like a set. So within these square brackets, we have written a range which is zero to nine. So we are asking for a pattern which only looks for numbers. And if we see what this pattern looks like, it says it is just an object of regular expressions. Now let's use another method here, which is called find iter. So find iter is going to go over the text sequence that we'll pass as an input, and it'll try to find out every possible match in an iterative way. So we are running a for loop. We are saying for each match in matches, and what is this matches? Matches is this string that we are going to go over, and it is going to print all the matches with some additional information. Let's see what it looks like. So it says it found a zero, it found another zero, and it found a seven. It also tells us the span of these. So span essentially means the index position. So if you look at our text, it will start counting it from the index zero here. And it, then it says the first point or the first index where it found a number was this. So let's count it zero, one, two, three, four. And then space is also counted five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That's why you see nine is the first index where you encountered a number. It gives a range nine and one more, but as you know in Python, the upper value is not counted. So we will not be considering that. We'll only have zero at index nine. Where's the next number right next to it? So that will be index 10. And where's the one after that? The number is at index 11, and that's what you see. If you want to just check what is there at index 11, you can just go to the string and pass the index in particular. It tells you that it found number seven at the index 11. The same output can be achieved using this backslash D. Backslash represents K and D together with it represents a digit. So basically we are talking about finding the digits. If we run this, we'll get the exact same output. So either we pass that as a set, values ranging from zero to nine, or we mentioned that it has to be a digit, it's going to give one in the same. Now, if you want to catch that entire pattern together, for example, if you know all the agent IDs are of three digits and you want to capture that entire ID from the string, you can do backslash T and these curly brackets and number three represents three repetitions of digits. So when we run this and we loop over this entire matches object, we'll be getting the specific ID. It will tell you that from span nine to 12 and it'll count nine, 10 and 11, the upper value again is not counted it found 007. Let's say we are more interested in finding out everything that's not a number. Basically, we want to exclude the digits. Then we can say our pattern includes lowercase a to z or uppercase a to z, basically a combination of alphabets only. And that's what we are compiling. Please note this R here right outside the quotes that you see is essentially to make this a raw string. So it, whatever you give as an input would be treated as a raw string. That's why we've been using R everywhere. And then, we do the same thing. We say find iter on text one. So we're going to iterate over the entire string and wherever we find a match, we are going to print that. This is going to give a lot of output because we have a lot of alphabets and this is going to do it at the character level. So you can see it gives you a very detailed output, pretty much everything excluding the numbers. That's the output that we get here. Now let's take another doc string here. So doc string essentially is something that we create using these three single quotes or three double quotes and it allows us to enter multiple lines. Often in codes, this is used to communicate the specific usage or applications of a particular function. So what we're doing is we're creating a doc string saying this is called a doc string. It can take multiple lines and then we have written some numbers. Let's say this is our second text. Now, once again, if we do a dot compile, but the pattern that we are looking for is just a single dot. So if you remember from the theory, a single dot represents any character except a new line. 
So let's run this. If you're looking for the presence of any character, it would include just about everything there. And we are doing a find iter over the text too. For each match in matches, we are printing that. So let's see what happens when we do this. So see, it starts with T and then it goes on. Even the spaces after this, for example, when we said this and there was a space, it's capturing a space also as a character, right? Then it is pretty much capturing everything except a new line. Now, one thing you might observe is it's starting to count from one. Why it's not counting from zero? Because when we did these three single quotes, we had hit enter. So that's considered a new line. And what did I say? A single dot here represents anything other than a new line character. That's why the indexing is starting from one because at index zero, you have a new line character or backslash n. Likewise, at the end also, we'll have a new line character because after this, we had hit enter and then we got these three single quotes. So it's capturing everything other than a new line character. That's what the single dot does. Let's take the same text and we are using a caret symbol. So, so caret symbol essentially represents the beginning of the string. But remember here in our case, we do not actually have the beginning of the string starting with this. So it would actually not return anything. When it doesn't find a match, it doesn't give you an error, doesn't return any output. What if we would have searched for a pattern which is beginning with a new line character? Would then that be a match? Would it be able to find that pattern there? Let's see. So you can see new line character is actually at index zero. That's what we discussed earlier as well. When we started writing the second line, we had hit an enter and that introduces a new line character. And that's something which we have at index zero. Now let's say we want to check if we have the presence of the new line character at the end as well, because after this one, two, three, four, five, six, we hit enter to get these three single quotes here. So let's see if we have new line character at the end. And in order to check for something at the end, you'll have to use the dollar symbol. So caret is used to check for something in the beginning and dollar symbol is used to check for something at the end. Again, it says 61 and 62. So basically index 61 is a new line character. Then let's say we have some other text where we have uh, different courses and there are some representations for these courses. These could be alphabets and numbers and alphanumerics. So now let's say we have a string which contains the names of some courses all separated by these spaces. And let's say we are interested in some particular courses. For example, we are interested in data science courses which begin with a DS. So may or may not be followed by a number. That's how the pattern is. So if you want to find this in particular, what we can do is we can search for a pattern which begins with a word boundary and it contains DS followed by a digit which may or may not be present. So this asterisk, if you remember, represents zero or more occurrences. So this should give us an output which would be definitely showing DS, but may or may not be followed by a digit. Let's run this. And we are doing pretty much the same thing. Find iter over text three for each match and matches. We are just printing each match. So if you see, it gets us DS. It gets a DS101. It gets us DS1. It gets us DS again here because we had this DSML. From there, it's able to extract DS. It doesn't have a digit. So it still finds that DS is present here. And then DS24. And again, DS here for DSAI. So it's able to find all those subjects which start with DS. And it has found that there are six such occurrences in this list. Now, let's say we do some modifications. We say that we only want those data science subjects where we at least have a digit. And there might be some encoding related to this, but we are saying we want those which at least have some digit. So what will that be? That will be with a plus symbol. Difference between asterisk and a plus symbol is that asterisk talks about zero or more occurrences, plus talks about one or more occurrences. So it can't have the scenario of zero. So when we run this, you can imagine now we will at least have to have one digit after a DS and only those patterns will be found. Let's run this and here you go. So from the previous output, you only see those ones which at least have one digit. So DS1 was that and DS24 was that. Now let's say we want to explore this a little further and what we are doing here is a combination of a couple of things that we've seen so far, along with something that's new. So what we have is a set, which is A to Z, uppercase alphabets. And when we say asterisk, it's zero or more occurrences of alphabets. Then we have ML followed by a digit. And then we have a question mark. So question mark here represents a zero one kind of a scenario, which means a digit may or may not be present. Asterisk represents a scenario where you have zero or more occurrences. Question mark represents a scenario where it's either present or not present. And then we have a word boundary at the end. 
So let's see what we'll be able to find out with this when we run this. So it's able to find two combinations. First is DSML. It has some alphabets, uppercase alphabets before ML. That's a valid combination. And it found ML3. Why? Because we gave digit as an optional thing. Why did it not talk about alphabets in the beginning? Because alphabets were put with asterisks. So zero or more occurrences of alphabets. That's why in the scenario where you had just ML3 written, you can imagine it was a scenario where the earlier occurrences were ignored, were not present. Zero or more. So zero is the scenario that we're talking about. And then you had ML followed by a digit. That's what it is able to capture. Why did it not capture ML101 here? Because we talked about only one digit as the occurrence. This question mark does not consider zero or more. It's, it considers zero or one. So that's why ML101 didn't get selected here. Once again, let's say we want to do a specific filter. We want to select only those data science subjects which are followed by three digits. So we are saying digits zero to nine and there are three occurrences. We can run this and what we get is just one place where we have DS101. You can see in this entire string, you don't have any other occurrence of DS where you have three digits. You have two digits, you have one digit, but you don't have three digits followed by DS. Now you can guess what are we trying to do? We are keeping it somewhat more flexible when we say zero to nine, but we are putting in these curly brackets, one, two, three. Now we are saying we are open for anything from a single digit to up to three digits. That's what we are considering. So now it will find out DS101, DS1, and uh, DS24, all these possibilities. Let's just run this. So you can see DS101, DS1, and DS24. Why? Because we kept it flexible. We said one comma three, which means it could be anything from one, two, three. So now we'll talk a little bit about groups, but before we talk about groups, let's discuss a possibility. What we are saying is that DS and a pipe symbol ML. So pipe symbol represents an or thing. So we are putting this DS or this entire piece together, which could be what? Which could be a pattern which begins with ML and followed by one to three digits. Let's see what is the output that we get. So see, we are iterating over the string. So it finds a DS first to begin with, then it finds another DS and it kind of gets that because we didn't put anything related to what follows DS. We didn't ask for a specific pattern related to DS. We asked for a specific pattern related to ML though. So it's taking up this DS and the second DS and even the DS1's DS is also being captured and this DS ML's DS is also being captured and DS 24's DS is also being captured. And for ML, if you see, it's able to capture all the occurrences where we have one or more digits up to three digits. So it is able to capture ML3. It is able to capture ML101. For DS, anything which contains DS is being captured. Whether it is followed by something or not, it could be followed by an alphabet, it could be followed by numbers, all are being captured. Now, there is one correction that we can do. If we wanted to look for those occurrences of DS, which are followed by one or more numbers, up to three numbers, or ML followed by one or more numbers, up to three numbers, then we could have put a grouping here. Let's see what do we do. So slight change. Last time, if you see, we didn't have parentheses here. Now we are putting parentheses. Now we are saying something that starts with a DS or ML and followed by one to three digits maximum. So now you find DS101, DS1, ML3, DS24, ML101.